Good evening, DW Randomizer, and welcome to week three action in the 2023 Dragon Warrior Randomizer Winter League. I'm DK9146, and alongside me in the booth tonight is going to be Beef Supreme TV. Good evening, Beef. What are you thinking about this week? Good evening. I'm excited to get some different flags in this week. Last week was a uh, twin tiebreak uh, week with a couple of real quick and uh, blink and you'll miss it seeds. And uh, these ones are going to take a lot more skill. You're going to, I think, see a lot less oh, going one way versus the other is going to be the difference and a lot more uh, overall strategy uh, taking people to victories here. Yeah, absolutely. Chaos Confusion officially ap an aptly named. Um, it can it can definitely confuse the heck out of you. And after seeing some of these seeds during some practice, we could be looking at anywhere from maybe a 30-ish minute seed up to probably close to two hours. I would guess that we'll probably fall on average right around that hour mark when all said and done with all 10 of these races. So anything could happen here. It's going to be crazy. Yeah, just about uh, just about everything on the uh, on the monsters are going to be randomized. So random monster stats and XP. Uh, random XP requirements. It's gonna be uh, gonna be weird to see uh, people's strategies here, or, or interesting rather to see that. Uh, weapon prices, chest locations are random as well. We've got short and easy Sherlock. So uh, the castle. Once you get there, you still have to collect all the uh, all the required items to uh, to build the bridge. Once you get there, uh, it's uh, it's zip on over to that randomized dragon lord, which. Uh, can be a, a problem. That's something I've come to find interesting is trying to decide when you feel comfortable enough to go. Yeah, ex exactly. And with the chaos, uh, the Dragon Lord and Dragon Lord 2 battles can be extremely interesting. We'll kind of touch base on those a little more as we move through the seed, but we do have a countdown going in the race room. So we should see some live action here momentarily from these four runners. All of them um, sitting at six points after two weeks. Yeah, this being a position round, everybody's. Uh... Everybody is going to be pretty evenly matched, and we'll see how this uh, we'll see how this plays out for everybody. Let's find out what's in the in the in the treasury in the uh, throne room here as we start. And do, and I do thank you for that raid, Aaron, to you too as well. Looks like these runners are going to start with a set of wings, an herb, and there will be gold in the back since we have no key. quick gold pickup and then we're going to uh we're going to head downstairs raid that treasury and see how many chests are there looks like four today we've got an herb stones of sunlight so at least one required item some gold and another herb so uh it looks like cyberdark and silly dabbit went back up into the uh into the throne room there uh so that they can uh, do this glitch so they're going to end up uh, finding a nice juicy gold chest. Yeah, we'll see what they opt to do. We do have random weapon prices on, and um, yeah, you, you never know what these weapons are going to cost you. Sometimes you can get all three of the big items, flame sword, silver shield, magic armor, for under 500 gold sometimes. Everything's 10,000 plus and anything in between. Yeah, it looks like we've got the, the harp trading cave in the basement. No town's immediately visible as Ziggy leaves town here. Um, but yeah, that's the other thing to worry about here is uh, is actually getting that gold to a town, especially with the randomized enemy stats. You can you can really run into some crazy stuff pretty quick. Yeah, we saw a stop spell and baby breath off of a droll for Ziggy here. He'll be uh, him and the other runners will be looking for what's aptly called the noodle. Basically, there's one guaranteed enemy in zone zero, one, and two that will be winnable. Uh, they have a max HP of five, and they can have no abilities. Uh, Ziggy with a crit. 39 XP off that Rogue Scorpion. Gonna be at least one level. Looks like more than one, for sure. Yeah, up to level three gets the Spell of Radiant. Um, Rogue Scorpion, not given a lot of experience. Uh, did look like it might be the Noodle here. Uh, one shot's the ar Armor Knight, though, for 23. That's nice to see. That Spectre only worth 13 XP. And is getting multiple levels again, up to level 7 already. Wow. Another 59 XP droll for Ziggy is going to send him up, uh, send him up again in levels here. 
So the random XP requirements being very friendly so far to the runners. Um, level 8 at just 121 experience is fantastic. Yeah, this is definitely where you start thinking uh, what curveball it's going to throw at you. So that cave we see is the uh, is the grave. Uh, Ziggy has radiance, so uh, sometimes a little bit easier to check if those uh, those uh, random chest locations are are filled with chests or not when you have that. If you get a chance to use it, that is. Uh, looks like this wizard's going to send Ziggy home. Yeah, wizard hitting a little hard there. Uh, meanwhile, we had Dammit down here in the bottom right has been in a long sustained battle with the slime that clearly is not a, a noodle um, and is dealing one damage. Did get a crit for five there, but um, he is uh, struggling to get this slime down. May uh, ultimately not be successful. And it's, yeah, and it's dodging now. Oh, there we go. Some, yeah, I was going to say, we see some of the other runners finally getting some of these level cyber darks up to level 8. I believe Coper just got level 8 as well. Yeah, feeling good enough to venture out a little ways, so cyber dark's going to find this, uh, this grave. And I missed what Ziggy killed, but he has just jumped up to level 11. Look at that HP already, 100, 128 HP, and we have not done anything yet. Yeah, we're we're still in we're still in the backyard of the castle, and we're sitting on 11 levels and 128 HP. Yeah, that uh, that random XP requirements definitely definitely being kind for for uh, for them today. Ziggy getting a little more luck going in here into swap or the grave uh, does cast that radiant. No alternate chest one and two, but alternate chest three is there, and he might be able to get up there. We'll find out. Yeah, Cyberdark just got sent home by a by a ghost who hit him for 88. Yeah, <laughs> Beta Strap's m mentioning that in, in the chat as well. We don't want to fight ghosts today. Today we are afraid of ghosts. That uh, that was nuts. Yes. Um, question in the chat: There can be up to three noodles, correct? Yes. Uh, there can be one for each zero, one and two. It can be the same. It can be different. Cyberdark finding uh, Swamp South here. Going to walk right by that potential chest location. So at this point, we got uh, Ziki with a little bit of a lead, but not a lot of experience and, and difference between him and last right now. Just Davit's having a little bit of trouble just finding that enemy that can give him some more levels here, stuck at level 3, which is 13 experience so far. Uh, but should be able to quickly jump up once he does, uh, does come across one or two different enemies here. Oh, Cyberdark checking the bridge. Nothing there, but it's going to see what we've got in this uh, shop in Grinham here. Silver shield. Heavily discounted. Flame sword. Almost affordable. Yeah, just just a little shy going to pick him up some chain mail too. Looks like we got Ziggy and Tablet Cape. Uh, going to take a dive down and see if there's any chests. And it's not looking good so far. There is one. Cursed belt. Yeah, pretty worthless uh, tablet cave there, but immediately another cave just north of this mountain. Oh, that's nice to see. Couple chests in the back room of uh, Grinham here for Cyberdark. Fighter's ring, gonna put that on. Also find some more gold, hey. I think we would have had enough for that flame sword, actually. Yeah, if you hadn't done the other purchases, definitely would. Um, could always just recycle one more gold chest and get it back there. And we have the jerk in the basement. Oh, that's good information. We've seen the harp cave. We've seen the jerk. We just need to find Sherlock and all the items now. Just 
with Ziggy in the Stones Cave, aka the Freebie Cave, did miss what he got. There was one chest in there, and Cyberdark is exactly doing that. He's yeah, one absolutely. Chest Heading right back for that. Well, those werewolves worth, uh, that looked like almost 300 XP there. 251? Okay, I, I must have misread it, but still, 251 is pretty hefty, and it doesn't look like, uh, I'm not sure how hard they were to kill. <laughs> not as easy as the, not as easy as that druin, though. Yeah, 251 is a fantastic number here. I, once you hit 200 and up, you really are enjoying whatever the enemy is, unless it's one of those ridiculous slogs or you have to f fight it for many, many rounds, you're pretty much going to be happy seeing an enemy like that. Yeah, that's your golden ticket. You find you find that uh, zone with at least one or two good enemies like that. Yeah, you, uh, you sit there for a while, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. So yeah, for like someone like David, that's a little behind the rest of these runners, both on exploration and experience. All it takes is him finding one of those type of enemies to kill two or three of them and instantly be back in it from an experience level perspective. Oh, and there is Sherlock on David's screen as well. So now at least we know where everything is except for the actual items. And even then, I think all we haven't seen is the token. And we are guaranteed um, for armor outside of Sherlock, um, unknown where the sword will ultimately be. It could be in any of the locations. Yeah, definitely a few dead enemies here and there. Silly dab it going after this uh, this scorpion, but if I remember right, yeah, 6 XP. Still, sometimes you have to. They're just... Sometimes they're just hard enough to run from, and you just kind of have to deal with it. Especially when they breathe Dragon Lord Breath on you. Oh, no. Ziggy checks the sw sp Swamp Spike and uh, sees that Druid Lord and runs away right away. <laughs> yeah. Do not blame him for that at all. Edric's sword found by Jake Hoper. That's definitely a fun find. Yeah, so er, so Mountain Cave definitely something you wanna you wanna go into. And we saw Ziggy see Mountain earlier and just opt out of looking in there at all. So we'll see if uh, how long it takes him to get back there. Yeah, especially if you do find everything else, you you might not want to go back there just out of just out of the fact that you would hate the to have to backtrack like that. So we got Jake Hoper trying to finish these last few checks in Mountain here. He had a brief pause, I'm assuming, taking a look at where those alternate places. Star Wyvern with a DL2 breath. Ouch. Takes it down, though, on one MP. Not sure if there's any more herbs. Oh, and now the Star Wyvern's running away, and he makes it to that chest. I think that... I don't. I don't know if that's the last chest that he's uh, that he needs in there. Yeah, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember if he checked the top or not. He definitely checked the side over here a moment ago. But either way, he's leaving because that wizard says. Yeah. Oh. So we got Cyberdark getting ready to try and dive grave. We got Ziggy in the back of uh, Garenham now. We've got Dammit just grinding just to the west of uh, Tantagel here, just trying to get some experience going here. And um, Jay Cooper looks like he's going to take a look in the back. 
Yeah, everybody, everybody going their separate, uh, going their separate ways in this one. It doesn't seem like anybody's following the same kind of uh, path or pattern, but that's what you get with this kind of chaos, and that's what's so fun is to watch how these different, everybody's different play just kind of coalescing at the end sometimes to a, to an exciting finish. That's what I'm hoping for for sure. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of times you will see, unless someone just finds that fantastic grind or enemy that the others don't, you'll see a lot of uh, convergence as we get near the end. Well, Cyberdark finds the fun police uh, pretty weak today. Went down to a 23 strike for a nice even 100. J. Coper and Swamp is finding these uh, finding these ghosts. I'm not sure if uh, I'm not sure if he's fought one yet, but doesn't doesn't really uh, have too much trouble with it. I think at this point it's uh, I think at this point those ghosts aren't as uh, aren't as painful as they were maybe ten levels ago. Oh, he is going to reach level twelve at least here though. It's a nine one three seven and hurt more. Hurt more. Definitely always on your, on your, always high on your list of spells you want to see. Yeah, Hurtmore can really save you a lot in a, in a Chaos race, as some of these enemies can have extremely high agility, causing them to uh, be basically unbeatable with just a sword alone, so a Hurtmore could really pull it out for you. Yeah, these are things I've definitely been learning in my practice this week, uh, and uh, I mean, there's uh, there's so much to it to take into account when you're when you're trying to think of okay, well, I'm attacking, I've got this attack power, I'm hitting for this much. How do you you know working doing the the, the backwards math to try and figure what your chances are? I'm I'm still getting used to all of this, but it's uh, it's definitely interesting to watch these. Uh, these veterans do the same kind of thing. No, I absolutely agree. Um, it, I mean, chaos is just that. It's chaotic. Um, it's a different, it's a different, a different seed every time. Um, it's just so insane, the different enemies that can be good or bad. Um, plus, we still got the best part of it, which is um, how nasty will our Dragon Lord be? Well, like I said, once we're getting to look like we're going to get in there, we'll touch more on how that Dragon Lord comes into play here. But we got Ziggy and Hoxness. Yeah, it looks like an extra chest here. We'll get to check the uh, check the spot as well. Just a torch. Yeah, torch not too useful with um, you know, permanent re permanent torch on. But we've got that metal slime in here. That metal slime hits pretty hard. He's gonna try and put him to sleep. Unfortunately for Ziggy, he doesn't know. He's within 50 experience from getting level 12 and hurt more and may have a better chance against this enemy. I don't remember how much metal slimes are worth, but uh, that would be the worst feeling is hitting that level off of this enemy and then realizing, ugh, if I'd hit one more thing along the way. Oh, it takes him out. That's unfortunate. Yeah, buddy. So, well, good news for him. He knows where that's at, and he should, as long as he can find an enemy or two here, get that level 63 away. I, I knew it was in that ballpark. So, yeah, he should get that level here momentarily, and then we'll probably see him retry that. Yeah, especially knowing uh, if there's if there's something there, it would have to be something uh, would have to be something pretty key at this point, since we've got just about everything else. I think that's the commentator's curse putting the flute under that uh, metal sign. <laughs> and there's that hurt more for Ziggy. We'll see uh, what he opts to do here. Well, it certainly looks like he's taking a walk. 
Well, don't look now, but we got Cooper at level 12 into Hoxness himself, so we should hopefully get a look and see if Hurtmore will work on this guy momentarily. Well, looks like he's just gonna just gonna go for the attacks. A bunch more a uh, bunch more MP on him, so might just work. Yeah, unless he's already tried it, I am kind of surprised as that Hurtmore's gonna do about three to four times as much damage as what he's uh, throwing out there with the sword right now. Oh, try and sleep now. I almost wonder if the thought process is... Oh, here's a crit. Yeah, buddy. Jay Cooper gets it. Oh, Death Necklace. <laughs> second second worst item it could have been, Death Necklace. Heck yeah. Um, to be fair, they do have a lot of HP. We'll see if, if they get the uh, Death Necklace range, if anybody's brave enough to throw it on or not. But that Green Dragon says 89 damage. Uh, we're done. Yeah, that green dragon is not a happy camper today. Yeah, get through that metal slime, get that whopping four experience for killing the metal slime, get the death necklace, which you're a little sad because you need token and armor, and um, and then get blasted by the green dragon. The whole the whole trilogy happened there. Oh, I know. It's a it's a roller coaster. Well, Ziggy's in the mountain now, so he should, barring um, a nasty enemy, be getting his sword here in a few moments. And then Dabbit down here on the bottom right, finding out the love about those werewolves, has uh, quickly started to catch up on experience, gets that level 12 with Hurtmore already. Yeah, and starts uh, doing, the, uh, doing the desert tile dance here. I'm definitely looking for a few more of those. Yeah, I can't say I blame him. Um, it, it, I, I would have to think that based on how things have gone for him, he probably does feel a little behind at this point. So just trying to hedge your bets, get your experience out of the way, and then worry about doing the exploration once you can repel is not a bad play. Yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely feels like the way you'd want to catch up. If you're feeling behind, that's uh, that's definitely how you're that's definitely how you're wanting to move forward. All right, our third runner in the mountain. We got Cyberdark in here, so we got Ziggy having picked up the Eldritch Sword, and Cyberdark again should uh, have no real issue getting down there and getting that himself. Silly Dabbit taking a look at the Breconary shop here. Looks like it looks like heading back to uh, potentially to that uh, to that werewolf zone. Yep, Cyberdark will be at the sword here momentarily once he gets downstairs. Uh, meanwhile, the question still stands, where is this token going to be, and where is the armor going to be? Because we know the armor is not in Charlotte, so we got those two items still outstanding out here somewhere in this overworld. Yep, nobody's seen Cantlin to know if there's uh, there's coordinates yet, but there was something under Hawksness. Uh, I don't know that we've seen Cole either. Yeah, we've got, um, we've got those uh, search spots in play for sure. Um, would be pretty funny if it ends up ultimately having both in one town or something. Um, with like coal search spot in one of the side chests, but Ziggy finding Rim and uh, just a curse belt down there. Yeah, gonna heal up and head back out. Oh, forgot to check the uh, the other chest as well here. Oh, and there is one. Oh, it's just some gold. 
Yeah, it's just some gold, but you definitely don't want to leave that outstanding right now, for sure, so... Oh, yeah, no way. So, we had two curse belts so far, so as uh, Beta throw out there in chat, we will definitely have at least either cords or coal with an item. Um, we'll have to wait and see uh, which location we find first and which one's in play. There's Dabbit picking up his harp as well. Jay Coper coming into Cantlin here, gonna find, uh, gonna make his way through the, uh, the tiles here to the, to the old wise man who's gonna tell us whether we, uh, whether we search or fight today. 21 north, 28 east are our coordinates. I, I think that's certainly countable. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, that's gonna be just, uh, just past where Sherlock was, or somewhere yeah. in the vicinity. Right around, right around there, and yeah, for sure, it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't remember there being too many, uh, lakes or obstructions that way, so, should be, uh, should be relatively easy count, and then you don't have to worry about that Druin Lord that's, uh, guarding the princess there. Yeah, exactly, so, we see Cyberdark trying to check some items here, but getting an NPC blocked, meanwhile, Jay Cobra does remember to check that bottom left chest, um, in a past week, uh, that one haunted him a little bit. We got Dabbit doing the, the, the deep dive in Grave here. We'll see if, um, I, I know Cyberdark started, but I don't know if he was able to finish it or not. Alright, so chat confirming he did finish it, yeah. so we're, we're not going to care about anything down here then. Nothing new or exciting is going to happen down there. So, Ziggy falling in Coper's footsteps and Cyberdark falling shortly behind Ziggy. We're going to have uh, both of them getting their coordinates here momentarily. So, uh, we'll have three of the runners with uh, very, very similar knowledge at this point. Yeah, looking like everybody going to pick up that magic armor as well. Yeah, it's still, I mean, that's still nice to have. You know, walking, that added benefit of the uh, hurt, hurt more reduction um, and the extra defense until you do finally get a hold of your Urdrix armor, especially with these nasty enemies that hit pretty hard around the, the map. Yeah, you definitely feel, you definitely feel a lot better with it. Cyberdark about to find his coordinates as well. Runners in a prolonged battle with Drakima is uh, ultimately <laughs> yeah. give 26 experience. Oh no. Oh, that's frustrating. It's those little it's those little things when you spend so much time on an enemy like that and you realize at the end you see the XP flash by and you say, Oh wow, that's time I'm not getting back. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I think in, in Chaos, it almost always, unless you find just like the absolute ridiculously good grind area with great enemies, it's almost always going to pay off to check all the enemies just to see if you can find yeah. that unicorn. No, exactly. Something like this. something like that long slog might be a lot more worth it if it wasn't just 20 something XP. But if you don't know, then it might be the right move that you're just passing by. Yeah, exactly. So, so to kind of paint the picture here, we have uh, Silly Dammit with a little bit of a exploration disadvantage, but has caught up on experience to our two leaders with Jay Coper and Ziggy. Uh, meanwhile, Cyberdark, Jay Coper, and Ziggy all have basically the same exploration knowledge, but Cyberdark fell on, falling a little behind on experience here, just not getting those same enemies on the uh, walk around as the other two have. Yeah, everyone aware of coordinates, uh, I believe, uh, except possibly Silly Dabbit, uh, and everyone just looking for the token. Uh, I 
think uh, that's all that's required. We know where the uh, we know where the uh, the trade-in cave is, so we can just go and open Charlock whenever we want. So it's uh, it's a matter of finding that token and uh, seeing how far you want to push it before you feel comfortable taking on the Dragon Lord. Yeah, exactly. Um, right now, uh, strength a little lagging, and uh, MP definitely lagging pretty hard, but we're only level 12. Um, it has been a little bit of time now since we got the level 12, and we still have not seen anybody reach 13, so um, this is a pretty decent jump in comparison to the other levels so far. Yeah, and I'm not sure any of these level 12 uh, people have died enough for us to uh, to see how much XP is left. I watched all three of them as they checked the cords in, um, in uh, Sherlock, or in oh. Caitlin, hoping they would die, and they didn't. Alright, Dan gets to the bottom, finds out the bad news, uh, just looking for his nice outside and return trip, and so we will get a uh, experience capture momentarily from the damage screen. Gotta make sure the fighter's ring is on straight here. 569 from whatever he's at now. 2783. So, right around thir just over 3,300 here, and uh, meanwhile, we have CyberDark probably honing in on this, and there we go, we got the flute! Oh, yay! <laughs> wow, just what, just what everyone wanted. Exactly, so now, so now, um, we're in, uh, we're in, we, we, we almost assuredly have, uh, I think we're down to everything's in cult? Uh, I think we are, um... I can't think of anywhere we haven't seen or fully explored except coal. So, <laughs> wow, <laughs> let's let's see who finds it first, I guess. Because then, I mean, once you've done that, you've got reasonable places. I feel like everybody's. I feel like everybody's going to go back to the to the werewolf desert. And as our tracker Schmike pointed out in chat, no one has gone through the Druid Lord yet to see the chest potential backed by where Gwalen sits as well. So we oh, do have that chest out there. Yeah, that's a good point. I won't lie, when I'm watching four people, it's impossible for me to really remember too much about the map. I have no clue what part of these map, uh, this map these people have not viewed to see where Cole is. <laughs> I, I, I feel the exact same way, too. Every time I'm watching four different screens, it's hard because you're not keeping track, and then all of a sudden somebody sees Charlock, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Were they just in Remolder or Breconary or, or what? Well, there it is. Yeah, Ziggy found it. He went south and then west from somewhere. Let's see what's on the search tile. The armor. Okay, well, I mean, that's... That's it's something. And now we see there's no other chests here. So it's got to oh. be by the princess. Yep. I was, I was going to say, unless we overlook some alternate chest somewhere, it's got to be the princess chest with the token. Cyberdark as well here. Gonna be disappointed. <laughs> I mean, you can't be disappointed finding the armor, but I think at this point you kind of would prefer to have seen the token. Now, if you want to see disappointment, watch Ziggy's screen here in a couple moments. Uh, one, when he realizes he counted the wrong direction to be able to make it there, but two, once he finds that flute. Oh, yes. Disappointment going around all all week. Be sure to catch all the disappointment all week. This is this is going to be the greatest uh, princess rescue ever as well, because everybody's going to just go straight in, make a left turn, open the chest, and then just hit outside and vanish. Yeah, maybe maybe an exasperated good luck to her on the uh, way out. Yes. Z 
Ziggy uh, honing in on disappointment momentarily. He's 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 combing the forest left and right, up and down. He's in the ballpark. It's one of these four styles. Yeah, it's definitely right around here. Oh. Alright, I think Dammit just got the level I caught the tail end of it, though. Yeah, I definitely saw a 13 there. Well, yeah, those, uh, those stats, uh, we got 14 and 15 in the two categories we definitely needed some gains in, so that's pretty good for the yeah. runs overall. And that's a good point, Betastrap mentioning in the chat as well that saving the princess isn't uh isn't as useless as i i seem to, to think because yeah, it's definitely useful sometimes knowing how much xp there is to the next level well here we go ziggy on this druid lord two hurt wars and takes it down for 126 i mean it could have been worse yeah yeah not too terrible and there's the token so fantastic so we here know where everything is. Ziggy also knows where everything is at this point, but um, ultimately it's going to be where does he want to settle down and grind? Yeah, picking up the princess, definitely, uh, as Beta was saying there as well, uh, trying to, uh, go going to at least have that extra little bit of information. Yeah, I've seen, and I know it does give really good information, but I have seen that Whalen come back to bite people, not just because of that little bit of extra time at the end, but because people will check after a level up that's really borderline but possibly winnable, check that level and see, ooh, I'm only five, 600 away, that's four or five of these enemies, grind that out. Meanwhile, they're, you know, one of the other racers that doesn't know that information goes ahead and makes that ch takes that chance on that level and uh, zoom past them. Um, doesn't happen too often, but I have seen that come across in a few races in the past. Yeah, it's always exciting. <laughs> it's always exciting when little things like that make the difference. That's why I love watching these so much, is, is just seeing how the little, the little decisions can sometimes make such a huge impact. It's always entertaining. Jake Hoper finding Cole as well, picking up his armor. So yeah, things are coming together for everybody here. Um, Ziggy just with all the all the knowledge and just literally needing to grind at this moment. So um, if he can find a decent enough grind, um, he's going to be in business. Um, unfortunately, we got Dabit with that experience lead, but is well behind still on exploration. He's kind of finally getting into that whole area that we saw all the other runners go through about 10, 12 minutes ago. Um, so he's going to continue east here and start completing the rest of that exploration. Um, and hopefully get caught up soon. The only piece that he won't get this direction is Cole, as we know that was somewhere completely different. Yeah, if I recall, it was just south and west of somewhere. Yeah, I remember seeing Ziggy go yeah. down and left. I yeah. have no clue from where. When, when Dabit starts moving in his southwesterly direction, we'll, we'll pay attention. So yeah, it, it's almost uh, a repeat down here. We're going to see him go look at these shops, pick up a magic armor, go get some coordinates. Uh, then from there, we'll see what order he decides to go. If he wants to go check the cords first, get the flute, or continue looking at other places before going to get the flute. But ultimately, I almost assuredly guarantee he will get the flute as well. Yeah, we'll see how we'll see how good this uh, this XP lead is when this uh, when this exploration starts panning out for him. If it uh, if it happens, you know, you pick up uh, another couple levels along the way, and you might you might just pull it out. I had a feeling that Ziggy might come back here just uh, tempted by the uh, amount of experience this Druid Lord gave. Plus, it's a guaranteed uh, enemy. But man, with low low MP, having to throw out two hurt wars and then have to at least heal more every time. You're 18 MP down from one kill. Yeah, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel as if, it doesn't feel very efficient. Meanwhile, we have Cyberdark trying to get through the Druid Lord for the first time, 
gets blown up on an ambush and uh, backs out of that battle, goes back in with uh, full HP, should be able to get through here and find his token momentarily. Awesome. Yeah, Davit uh, finding the coordinates and then just immediately uh, killing himself on the uh, on the damage tiles to come home. Looks like he's going straight for these coordinates. Yeah, buddy. So hopefully i uh, be able to recover and uh, go find the rest of these locations here momentarily. Where, um, the one thing I don't know, where did the runners get the heart? Because I don't see that tracked for Davit yet. Oh, I remember seeing it, but I don't remember where. Uh, yeah, top, top grave. grave, yeah. Data strap in the chat, thank you. Yeah, I will, yeah, good call. I, I will assume he must have got it, because he did do that deep dive of grave. Um, hopefully he wouldn't have overlooked it. Either. And damn it's heart breaks in three, two, one, now! If you freeze frame, you can pinpoint the exact moment. Very, very nice reference there. So, here we go! <laughs> and damn it immediately uses the flute on a golem. Oh, that's perfect. Probably out of spite. Oh, I would. Coper with his uh, token rescuing the princess as well. Yeah, rescuing the princess coming out here, going to top off in Garenham for a quick refill, most likely, and then uh, see about turning her in. Ziggy going to dig the hawks in the spot? A lot easier at level 13, this metal slime, for sure. Unless I just cursed it. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're getting a little more defense here with all that uh, gear they have on, but yeah, these, these uh, Chaos enemies, they, their range is so wide, it's crazy. Yeah, I've come across some, some amazing, epic battles against just red slimes. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun seeing what, uh, <laughs> what some of the enemies are that these, uh, this randomizer comes up with. Well, damn it, gives it his all against a uh, drool lord out here on the overworld and uh, finds out the bad news that they are. They are beasts with their, uh, whatever, their tentacles or whatever they're hitting with. I don't even want to know what they're hitting with. I'm wondering if, um, if uh, Ziggy's going to go into Sherlock here and maybe try and take a look and see if the spike in here might play pay off. I find a lot of times the chaos uh, spikes are just absolute dumpster tier experience, but every once in a while you get lucky, so, and that looks to be what he's going to try. Yeah, and plus, you never know, maybe you get lucky and the enemies in here are worth a lot anyway. Especially knowing you can run from them easy if you have to as well might be uh, a little bit more of a factor to try some of these fights. I don't know, that, that flag says easy Sherlock, um, I have not seen that actually play out in practice, although Ziggy's two for two so far. We've got those 130 XP Druins. Gonna fight this Wyvern as well. Oh, maybe not. Yeah, if he could uh, get lucky and have that Druin be the spike tile in here, oh boy, he, he would take yeah. off real quick. So yeah, and getting, yeah, I was going to say, and, and Scarlet Shadow reminded me, now we're getting near endgame, let's talk about the Dragonlord. So the Dragonlord battles both, 1 and 2, are randomized, uh, with Dragonlord 1 um, potentially becoming an absolute beast or an absolute kitten, anything in between. They can have 
Dragon Lord 1 can have DL2, heal more, sleep, the works. Um, it, it, it can be a slog. It could go down in one swing. Um, it's absolutely hilarious. Uh, and that spike, I uh, missed what the spike was. I only gave 36 experience, though. So, not a good spike. Demon Knight. Yeah, it was a Demon Knight, but yeah, it was uh, not, a, not, a very, uh, not a very juicy Demon Knight. So... Let's say once you get through Dragon Lord 1, depending on how that battle goes for you, now now you're into the Dragon Lord 2. Uh, standard, we're normally 150 to 165 hit points on that Dragon Lord with just some DL2 breath mixed in with some attacks, but not, not this Dragon Lord. This Dragon Lord can bring you along, potentially either sleep or heal, not guaranteed to have either, can only have one, they are exclusive, but his HP range is from 100 all the way up to 230, so you could have a very, very easy to kill Dragon Lord, or you could have a absolute tank of a Dragon Lord. Um, and it's absolutely hilarious uh, when you get both of them end up being tanks um, and how you go about handling that situation. Yeah, that's definitely been the focus of my. Uh, that's definitely been the focus of my practice seat so far. Has been trying to come to terms with the fact that you just, first of all, you just don't know, and second of all, even when you do know, how do you deal with it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and there's, yeah, you know, there you can get lucky sometimes. Maybe you get lucky and he has sleep. Sleep actually, if you get a stop so off, can lead to several doubles, triples, even quads and beyond. But we're going to have Coper make our first attempt at the Dragon Lord here. We'll see how viable it is with this low MP momentarily. Yeah, Jay Coper just going for it. 138 HP, 68 MP. Going to stop spell off the bat, and it lands. All right, Dragon Lord 1 only throwing out a, a 9 and now a 6, so pretty weak overall. Uh, meanwhile, we two shot it, so Dragon Lord 1, not an issue. We'll see how Dragon Lord 2 goes. Right, stop spell going off as well. Exactly what I was going to say. Stop spell off. Um, praying for sleeps at this point when you get that stop spell off. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it's wanting to do sleeps. But on the other side, only level twelve. But we have Cyber Dark taking his own look here. Yeah, we're going to see just how beefy this Dragon Lord is, and uh, whether or not Jake Oprah can take him down. Cyber Dark is. Uh... Cyberdark's really low on resources, too. Yeah, I think that was more an exploratory dive. Yeah. But you never know. If you get a really uh, sleep-happy uh, Dragonlord 2, you can you can bust off... I think the most I've done is seven attacks with one heal more, without using a heal more. It's crazy. And Jay Coper is uh, hitting pretty, hitting pretty good. Last and you know, doing, doing everything you got to do at this point. But it's just a matter of we don't know when it's going to end. Yeah, he could be, he could be knocking on the door here. We might even get into a, like a heal range if the Dragon Lord does have heal and chooses to use it. Um, or we could be way, way short and have no clue. Yeah, one more heal, more in the uh, in the tank for Jay Coper here. There it is, out of MP. Fire Breath, still enough HP to take an attack here. Nope, not that one though. 44 is going to kill him. Yeah, gets the physical he wanted. Unfortunately, just too much damage there. So, not sure exactly what he did there. We got about a 133 count in chat. So, um, looking like we're going to need to at least look for one more level here. Yeah, Cyberdark not uh, not knowing that, but knowing what the spike tile is, seems like he's going to make a try, but... Or, or maybe he's just going for the... Uh, no, there's no reason to go for the chest, I think. Yeah, I mean, there's literally nothing that could pop... Oh, he wants to maybe find that Druin in here. Oh, yeah, that's what's going on. So, because we see over here on Ziggy's screen, he's been all over the place looking for that rate now, giving 170 a pop there. Uh, meanwhile, Dabit does finally come across Hawksness, is going to pick up his armor in the last piece as he did already get the token, um, and will be in the same boat as the rest of these, not really too far behind on experience when all's said and done. 
yeah, if your grind spot ends up being better, or you're even if you're just a little bit luckier with the grind spot you get. Yeah, I think Ziggy nailed it though. He's got at least two enemies in here, given 169 and 170. I saw yeah. the night. Yeah, I think you're right. Jay Coper staying close to home here. Yeah, I'm not sure what Jay Coper's looking for in this zone. It is uh, not the greatest tile set by any stretch of the imagination, but um, must have found something good in there. Oh, that next level. Uh, actually, we just got two levels up to level 16 and not even another heal mark. No, and we're up to 138 HP there. So, eh. yeah, I'd I'd keep uh, I'd keep the grind going if it were me. Yeah, he has the princess. I don't know if he did opt to check and see what that next level was away. So, but I mean, yeah, he did. He didn't really change too much. The plus eight attack power isn't terrible, but um, if it ends up being a 200 plus uh, HP dragon board, as we saw 133. Uh, with the previous attack power, and there's no change to the amount of heal more, so not going to be likely. Yeah. Yeah, Cyberdark, uh, getting these, getting a, getting a true runner too. Yeah, it, it, and that's this is exactly why it pays to really, really pay attention when you're doing chaos. Uh, checking all of those enemies, trying to you know, you know, vet out what the zones are because if you can get a zone like Ziggy does, even though the enemies he's really wanting keep keep dodging him to an extent, um, if you can get two out of five enemies in a zone that are that are a hundred plus in a in a scene such as this where there's no spike that's worthwhile, it absolutely will pay dividends at the end of the race. Yeah, and here's Cyberdark getting up to 13. Everybody's still in the red in the MP. In the orange, I mean. Yep, exactly. So now we have Dabit uh, falling in the footsteps of some of the previous runners going to go ahead and head into Sherlock here. Could be exploratory, or it could be hopeful that it's, uh, you know, an easy Dragon Lord. Uh, we'll see what happens for it. Yeah, Ziggy getting 17, which looks like it was a, a zero, zero, 007 and 0. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, really, uh, really pays off there. Yeah. Dabbit's heading in. And evidently that next level to 18 was nearly 3,000 experience away, so it looks like Ziggy's going to give, give, give it another shot here. Yeah. But here we go. We got Ziggy going in. Um, he's going to have nine heal mores. And um, you never know. You know how the rolls go and maybe 130 was just shy. Um, that's the great thing about Chaos. You really have no idea. Yeah, we might have been off by, by one. You never know. It is often to throw out the stop spell. It does not have effect. So will he waste another one and kill a heal more? No, he does not. Yeah, doing quicker math than me, figuring out that uh, another another one of those would have killed a heal. All right, here's Ziggy. I'm gonna try to be a fool for a second time. Yeah, Ziggy with a, a ton of HP here uh, potentially could go in with an even p possible opening triple, especially after getting that stop spell from the Dragon Lord. Yeah, DL1, no match tonight. Well, Ziggy throws out the stop spell, does get his to land. We know for sure at this point there's no sleep. It's impossible for us not to have seen it at this point, but there could still be that back end heal. Yeah, I've been caught by that one once or twice.
All right, um, we got David. You know, he's down to those last three heal wars, looking uh, looking for as many swings as he can possibly get. Hopefully, or hoping for some uh, doubles and such along the way. But uh, we'll see if this plays off or not. I've not been able to keep up on the count for him. Yeah, nor have I. Starting to really run low on resources, but you know, two two heal wars left. You never know. Last heal more for Dabit. Yeah, unless he kills it here, he's looking for a low physical here and is getting one final swing. That's it. No. Oh! He's got heal! Oh my gosh, it does have heal! He has no off. stop spell. Oh no. That's brutal for Dabit. Um, really good news for Ziggy because he goes in there with that little bit of extra HP as long as his swings have been true. And there's the heal from the Dragon Lord on Ziggy. So barring catastrophe, it looks like Ziggy should be able to pull this W off. Wow, that was an exciting, uh, an exciting moment there. Finding out the heal on one side, Ziggy getting the kill. GG's in the chat to Ziggy. Absolutely. Get those GG's out for Ziggy. You're going to take first place from the five points from week three here. Unfortunately for Dabit, if he had landed that stop spell that did not land at the beginning, high likelihood he might be able to have pulled that off. Yeah, that stop spell goes off and that just changes everything. That's that's pretty incredible. And now at level 14, we have Cyber Dark um, in here making another attempt. Uh, meanwhile, at level 17, Koper is back inside, and we'll see if he can make it around and how his battle goes. And Ziggy's official time is 54-13. Alright, Jay Koper into that easy Demon Knight on the home stretch to making it around to the Dragon Lord. We'll see if he opts to use that stop zone. Yeah, and everything that's been going on, I haven't caught whether or not Cyberdark landed a, a stop spell here. He missed the first one, threw a second, and I did miss if it landed, but he stopped throwing them, so either gave up or it did land. We'll find out once the heal comes out. Yeah, or if the heal comes out. He is still fairly weak down at level 14. I think he's only at 131 attack, if I'm not mistaken, to where we were at at 114. That is true. Yeah, Jay Coper going in pretty full stats at 17. Yeah, stop spell did not land there, and uh, he is going to try again, and he does get it to land the second time. We'll see if he'll be able to get it into that heal range. Meanwhile, with that beep, we do have the ninth race winner, Ziggy, joining us in the booth. GG, Ziggy, how you feeling? Ziggy, GG. I'm feeling really good. That was a really tough group. I was uh, worried about everyone, everyone in the group, uh, like are solid players and I got worried quite a few times in this seed because I couldn't get I couldn't find any good grind that made sense. So I ended up flailing around at the end and I went like, oh no, it's guaranteed someone found something good. Um and couldn't find and <laughs> turns out maybe nobody found anything and the zone close to um Cantlin was the best place to grind at the end. Yeah, I would say from watching all of the runners here, you probably found the best zone with that Wraith and Wraith Knight. Um, everybody else was in the exact same boat. There was just nothing that stood out for any runners. Yeah, the uh, Druin Lord was fine on experience, but it was too dangerous. The uh, Demon Knight gave no experience. The um, And the uh, what Metal Slime was both too dangerous and gave no experience. Yeah. So it was kind of a pain. <laughs> I ended up giving up on grinding on a, on a tile and just going to the best zone I had seen. 
Yeah, a lot of very dangerous level enemies on here. We got Jay Cooper, meanwhile, in the Dragon Lord fight. Does get the Dragon Lord into the heal range with still two heal wars in the tank. So it should be straight. Oh, 22 to finish it off. Get your GG's out for Jay there Cooper. There it is. He's going to finish second in tonight's race and pick up three points. GG's to Jay Cooper. Yeah, GG's, Jay. We, like, all four of us are kind of in a position where we have a good shot of making the playoffs, but a win makes it so much more comfortable coming into the next two weeks. It's incredible. Yeah, for sure. Going into, uh, going into week four with 11 points, you're, you gotta be feeling pretty comfortable. So let me ask you, Ziggy, I did have one question, because um, you differed in one way specifically from the rest of these runners. You opted not to make any dives into Sherlock until you hit that level 17 and, and felt that you were in a position to maybe go win this. Um, did you have any thoughts to maybe do an exploratory dive at all or or even dive in a little early? Because we've seen multiple shots at level 14 at this point. MP was bad, and AP was not that good, even with um, the uh, Death Necklace. So the only kind of Dragon Lord I could beat is one that rolled significantly lower than average. And I didn't really feel comfortable with that. So uh, what I decided to do is just ask Quaylen, uh, yo, when's the next big, big level? And that was 18, so I went at 17. Very nice. And with that, Dean, we do have the second place runner, Jay Cooper, joining us in the boot. GG, Jay Cooper. How are you feeling after this race? right in heal range or very close to it on the first fight and um yeah uh that that was really annoying i i have i don't know what my damage difference was i think i don't count my damage but it it sure must have been close the first time so. it was close the first time yeah we we lost count uh we lost count ourselves as well so i couldn't tell you exactly how close but it was uh it was pretty close what can you uh, do? GG, by the way. Yeah, GG, Siggy. Well played. You too. Uh, did you get kicked in the face for 90 damage by everything in the seed? Uh, everything had, like, so much strength, it was a real pain. No, only, like, two or three things. Um, uh, there were the Green Dragon, the Ghost, the Druin Lord, there were a few others. That was really hard. Yeah, uh, the Metal I... Slime was ridiculous. Oh, what is he farming in Sherlock? That's interesting. Uh, most likely the Druin. It's given, I think, 130 experience. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was a one-hit kill. Game one All right. Um, yeah, I think I ran from it, and then I had regrets after I ran from it. But even so, I probably still wouldn't have farmed in Sherlock. I would have just grinded where I did. Anyway. Um, uh, where did you end up grinding? I ended uh, up grinding close to Shire to uh, Cantland. There was a nice zone there. Uh, yeah, there was probably a better zone. Um, I just grinded close to start because there were stone men there. Um, and, uh, the other stuff wasn't great, but it, it wasn't, um, bad enough to push me away. So. There was also a werewolf zone, but it was, there was a lot of bad enemies with it. So I don't know what the werewolves had, and I don't remember. The, they the... gave in the 230s. Oh, okay. Great. I don't think I ever saw that, so... Uh, now I'm checking about that. Oh, maybe I- did I see a werewolf and it killed me or something, maybe? Oh, uh, let's see. I got stats going on the screen right now. I can tell myself. Um, Alright, meanwhile, we got Silly Dammit, and, uh, does not get it in the heal range, or it does not want to use heal, unfortunately, gonna take a death on his second battle with the Dragon Lord after getting Stop Spell to land the second time, but not the first time. Uh, I saw zero werewolves, so... That, that explains why I didn't grind them. Oh. Yeah, they were they were, they were they were around, but they weren't everywhere. There was definitely a a little region in a in a desert somewhere that I remember seeing uh, seeing some, but it wasn't very often. It's just I remember it being uh, significant when we saw the uh, the amount of XP. Dabit uh, Dabit ended up grinding in that area for uh, I think maybe five or six of them. And, Kind of zoomed up past you guys for a little bit, uh, XP wide. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I never really felt like I was gaining experience at a, a notable rate, I guess. Um, but, but, um, the seed overall went 
pretty smoothly. Never dipped into um, the, uh, the grave past the first floor, so that was nice. Oh. Well, here we got the Dragon Lord 1 stats up here. I Wait, did. Uh, 70 HP. Sorry, sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, no, 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 you did. You did. Um, the, the, uh, the Dragon Lord 1 is so short. But, uh, yeah, I was super late to the armor, I guess, because it was like the last thing I found, but it was still okay. Nothing felt bad. Yeah, the funny thing is, you, everyone in this race went the exact same way. Um, so everybody was late getting down there. Cole was basically the last location for every single runner in this race. I think the problem is that, uh, Swarm Salad was in the way. Yeah. So we all went into Swarm Salad, found Garinum, and probably exploring and end up finding Hawk's Nest, and that was pretty much it. Yeah, and then I, I died soon after finding Hawk's Nest. Explored in other directions and found everything else. Cyber taking a death to the Dragon Lord as well. He's that on has the death necklace on now, so is going to be getting kicked out. Yeah, well, he's got a town right there next to the um, next to Sherlock, so it's not all that bad for him. Yeah, but it's Breconary. Like yeah, Breconary is the best place to stop by when you just want it in. So. <laughs> And I wanted to say thank you to Ferran Burgundy for the raid, and welcome, Ferran, and all raiders. We're doing, we've, uh, in the first race of week three of the 2023 Dragon Warrior Randomizer Winter League, um, and we've got two of our runners already done here in the booth, while the other two are uh, repeatedly trying to throw themselves at this Dragon Lord. Silly Dan up to level 16 now, we'll see if that pays off for it. 16 should be level, I mean, the 7 of each of didn't change. No, it didn't. Okay, so it sounds like we made very similar decisions there, as far as that's concerned. Um, yeah, I ended up saving the princess, and she told me, oh, uh, 17 is just 400 experience away, so I grinded that before going. Yeah, yeah, and then I, yeah, you, you, you did the same thing, so you did the, check the next one, and it was like, whatever, 3,000 something. Yeah. It was... It was worth giving it another shot, um, especially because I thought I think it would finish by then. Um, but, um yeah, it, it was funny, the, uh, searching, or uh, counting out the overworld spot is what led me to find, uh, Reckonary, and then, uh, I think I found, um, Cole from there. Yeah, I, I did the coordinates after I found the relocation. And then, yay, flew. Nice. I'm sure DK was laughing at the booth when he found the Hysterically laughing. Absolutely hysterically laughing, and then making fun of each subsequent runner as they were going to the spike to get the same bad news. Um, it was so, it was, it was the most enjoyable part of my game so far. And then yeah, Token okay. was with the princess the whole time. Yeah, everyone had the same series of disappointments. Alright, so Damic... I'm glad I went there. Oops, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. I was going to say, Damic did get his stop spell to land. Initially, um, is in potentially good position to finally take down this Dragon Lord, I think, on the fourth battle that we've seen him do. It's at least three. I think it might be four. Yeah, this is four. Uh, the first one... Uh, Stabbit was the first one to get the Dragon Lord to do... to cast heal. And uh, I know you, you, you both in the booth here might not have known this, but uh, or, or it might have been mentioned, but um, he had tried to cast a stop spell at the start, didn't get it off, and casting it again would have eaten into another heal more. And so he ended up getting the Dragon Lord down to the point where it was casting heal, but then couldn't do anything about it, uh, and ended up uh, ended up taking a death. Well, that explains why he tried again at 14 more yeah. times. Because he got really close and he figured that he could probably do it. But exactly. Oh, that's, that's super harsh. It would have been better for him to not get to the uh, heal spot. Yeah. Probably. Well, exactly, because if, if you don't know you were that close, you might just say, you know what, no, I'm just going to take a few more levels and, and go again later. Oh, he's got there again with 28 yep. MP. Good exactly. Now. He's golden. He got into the heal stage to let three heal mores. 
should see a death here in one or two swings. Yeah, I think mine was one swing away by the time I did use Um, yeah, who spoke so far for the Dragon Lord first overall? Was it Dabit? Yeah, Dabit was the first to do an official, actual, um, Ziggy was right behind him, so it would actually have been a pretty tight, uh, finish there between the two of them. Uh, I, I actually, oh, sorry, no, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, get your GG's out for Silly Dabit, gonna finish third overall tonight, not taking home two points from this race with an official time of one hour, seven minutes, and 45 seconds. GG's to Silly Dabit. Uh, to get back to Jay Coper's question, though, because, uh, I know, uh, you were asking who actually fought the Dragon Lord first. You actually fought the Dragon Lord first, but you it was just after you got, I think, 14, and you had you know, pretty minimal resources, and you went in you know, with not enough to win, but you, you, you were the first to fight him. Well, I, I think I did have enough to win. I just got unlucky. Um, it, like, I, it, I think he was only casting heal 25%, maybe, or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure I got him down to heal range. So, uh, like, that was a serious attempt. It, just, it was just that the level only gave me 16 more MP or something. So, yeah. it was like, more at the point back castle. And it's like, you know, if he's got sleep, then it's going to be free if I land like a stop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, yeah, um, it, it, yeah, yeah, it was just a, it, it, it wasn't like, oh, I'm just going to check out Charlotte or something. That was, it was a serious attempt. It was just, it didn't seem like, like it was very really working. Uh, going back to the guy I had yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't think that made a difference. Um, maybe it did, but, but um, uh, unlikely. I mean, that's, I, I think that's just some lucky it did it, 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 either way. But, um, you know, what, what can you do? It, it all worked out in the end, I suppose. So, so. Um, yeah. Yeah, it certainly seemed like it went it went smoothly after yeah. that, especially you know going in and trying it. I think, like I said, you got to um, you got you got all that knowledge that you needed. And I think from there, there were you know, well, I mean, I I, I want to say not just from there, but throughout the whole season, it didn't seem like there was any point where anybody was was looking at any of you guys and saying, "Oh yeah, that's a mistake." You know, it just seemed like it was pretty smooth for everybody all the way through. Yeah, this was a fairly little easy chaos seat, I think. Um, although, uh, I did feel extremely fortunate at the start, because my very first uh, swing was crit to kill him. Um, something. So, I uh, don't know how long it took other to get the first kill. I think that was in the server factor at all. Now, I think we got on off the ground pretty quickly. Unfortunately, Dabit was well behind, caught up a little later. But get those GGs out. CyberDark does reign victorious in this last attempt. It's going to finish with the like one point, but it did get in here. Not too far behind our runners here. We'll see in the initial time moment here. Later. Oh, it was actually 50% Oh yeah, there's the Dragon Lord stats there, yeah. 50% heal. I, I can't read that, uh, that HP, what does it say? Uh, 189. Oh, okay, okay. So, so uh, definitely a, a bit high. Yeah, little, little, little beefy today. Uh, GG Dabit, by the way. GG. GG, yeah. everybody. Yeah, GG Dabit. How are you feeling after, uh, coming in here? A bunch of silly mistakes throughout the seed. I bet people got a laugh out of uh, me hitting the wings uh, early on in the seed, but that wasn't that big of a time loss. Um, I might, you know, obviously I got into heal range on the first fight, um, but I don't know. I, I wasn't sure if, you know, let's say I land that stop spell, maybe I pull it out, but there's no guarantee that he's gonna he's gonna keep casting hill. I honestly only went there. I didn't even feel confident enough in ghost stats there but i just went to just hey see see what dl1 and dl2 has and then just wind up getting pretty close and then obviously that second fight i should have just gotten the level i think i just saw somebody else finish and i was like all right throw myself at it but you know all in all it was still a fun seed
Yeah, it's, from what they were saying, it sounds like their decisions were very understandable. So. Yeah, I think yeah. everybody made really sound decisions overall. The end of the game, everybody kind of varied a little bit on their Dragon Lord attack um, and whether they wanted the levels before or after or wanted the repeat. But other than that, it was, it was pretty straightforward for everybody. Everybody tried basically the same stuff. I think the scene was kind of difficult, but pretty straightforward overall. It was not very complicated seed, but I can see it having uh, variance. The GG Cyberduck. Yeah, I was going to say, Cyberduck snuck in on us. GG, how you feel about this one? Uh, you know, the, I fought the Dragonlord four times, and that drew in the third or fourth dive. I didn't know it had high attack until, you know, I was ready to win. I don't yeah, think Drew I ever got attacked by Drew. How much damage did it do? Um, 80 something. I was one shotting him. That was my grind. I didn't know where else to grind, so I was grinding them in Sherlock, and I died. I went to go back in and got halfway around and got double dodged and then attacked and breathed, of course. Yeah, there you go. Drew in with 184 attack power and a 50% deal, too. Sounds right. I know werewolves were good. I couldn't remember where they were. I wanted to go there immediately to, to get a couple levels, but I just... Swamp is right there. I know it was kind of a risky fight, but I wind up grinding those Druin Lords in, in Swamp Cave for just a little bit. Yeah, that was the only other enemy I could think of, and I thought it was too risky. Yeah, I grinded Stone Men um, just near the start, because they were close to their needy experience, maybe a little more. I grinded the uh, rates and rate knights close to uh, Kentlin. They gave they gave a hundred and seventy experience each. I saw wraith knights in grave, maybe. I don't think I saw the stone man, and I I don't think I saw werewolves either. No, I didn't. Yeah, I never saw the werewolf, but that was the the star of the seed for enemies to fight. It seems. I, I thought maybe that stone man was in that first zone, the desert. I couldn't get it to show up, though. I got one lucky crit on it kind of early, and then after that, I never saw saw many. Oh, I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't actually in the desert. I don't. I don't know if he was in the desert. Um, I didn't experiment. I just was like, I saw him here, and I'm gonna grind here in the forest and stuff. So, um, yeah. What well, that that wasn't ideal at all. I mean. Nothing about the grind was ideal, but it was just like, I've got a few hundred experience for this level, try to get a couple of these stone men. And then I was like, go oh, check the next level. It's just a couple hundred experience more. Okay, try to get another stone man. And then, yeah, it, it wasn't like any sort of dedicated grind really, because uh, by the time that I was in that position, you know, it was just uh, get a few hundred experience points. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we lucked out that this was not the kind of seed that you need 16,000 experience to win, because that would have been one hell of a slug. Definitely played a couple of those in practice. <laughs> <laughs> I saw DK play one uh, just before this uh, this race. Yeah, not uh, that that my my seed was. Um... I won't say much about it because it was the non-standard seed of the week, so you got a little bit of a spoiler there. But uh, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's some of these chaos can be a slog, as he mentioned. Anyway, um, thank you guys for all of the uh, the tracking, uh, the commentary, and restream, everything like that. Thanks for putting the tournament on so far, um, and thanks guys for the race. I'm looking forward to next week, which I think is vanilla-ish. I believe, and um, see if I can get another second next week, since that's three in a row. Uh, Consistency is key. Yeah, I don't know if I can win the tournament doing that, but um, I maybe I can get second. <laughs> Very fair. So any of the other runners have any thoughts on next week or any final thoughts as well? As usual, I'd like to thank everybody that participated in the organization, commentators, streamers, uh, trackers. Thanks a lot. Always fun to play 
uh, in DWR tournaments because you make it so easy and so fun. Thank you very much. Echo those same sentiments. Thanks, everybody. Uh, everybody that puts on the show and, you know, everybody that shows up to, to come watch these races. We definitely appreciate it. Yep, echo that for sure. Thank you very much. Well, you got any final thoughts before we wrap up the night, Beef? Oh, I'm just excited for uh, for more of these races. I'll uh, I'll say uh, as far as uh, as far as I've con I'm concerned, I've been watching a lot of week one, watching a lot of week two, and I'm going to watch a lot of this week as well, uh, if not commentate a lot of it. But um, looking forward to the next one, which is going to be Wednesday uh, at 10:30 Eastern, and that's going to be group number eight. We're going to have Edge RG365, Mand, and Stags 28. That's group uh, that's group eight action on wednesday and yeah thanks uh the other thing is uh yeah just echoing the uh, the thanks all around to the uh, to the runners who put on a great show follow them uh with the links in the chat uh as well links in the chat to uh my uh the co-commentator here dk9146 we've got uh flower power 718 on the restream and uh, beta strep and schmike uh, as trackers so give them a follow as well and uh, thank you all for for watching and and thank you guys for racing and thank you everybody for uh for putting on a great tournament so far. Absolutely. Have a great evening, everybody. Thanks so much.